On the 3rd of August, I spoke in this house on the motion on empowering women. During my speech, I had shared an anecdote of a survivor of sexual assault. I was not present with the survivor in the police station as I described. The anecdote was shared by the survivor in a women's support group for women, which I was a part of. I did not share that I was a part of the group as I did not have the courage to publicly admit that I was part of it. I attended this support group because I myself am a survivor of sexual assault. I was sexually assaulted when I was 18 studying abroad. That assault has traumatized me till this day. The fear and shame accompanying sexual assault is extreme and long lasting as it has been and still is for me. Unlike the survivor whose anecdote I shared in this house, I did not have the courage to report my own assault. Yet, as a survivor, I wanted so deeply to speak up and also share the account I had heard when speaking on the motion without revealing my own private experience. I should not have shared the survivor's anecdote without her consent, nor should I have said that I accompanied her to the police station when I had not. It was wrong of me to do so. To survivors of sexual violence, I hope that this does not deter you from reporting your assaults. In sharing an anecdote without consent, I disregarded the principle of consent in discussions around survivors, consent, and sexual assault. As a survivor myself, I feel this failure deeply. It is important for me to take responsibility for my actions, for my error of judgment, and to set the record straight. I wish to correct the record by retracting the anecdote that I shared on the 3rd of August, and I wish to apologize to the Singapore police force. Lastly, I want to apologize to the survivor whose quote I use, to the House, to my constituents, to the Workers' Party, its members, and volunteers, and to my family, especially to my parents. To the residents of Sengkang, I'll work even harder for you. Thank you. Ida. Mr. Speaker, may, may I seek your permission to seek some clarifications from the member? Yes, please. Um, I would like to start by saying to the member that uh, I'm very sorry to hear that she was a victim of sexual assault. I can understand that that must be very difficult, um, and I hope uh, that she will have the, the courage to be able to come through this uh, and to be stronger as a result. Um, however, as the members' statements do also disclose some rather st startling disclosures, a bit of a bombshell, I might say, uh, I do have to seek some clarifications um, because I, I need to know uh, what, what exactly uh, should follow from this disclosure. So I hope the member will understand and bear with me uh, as I seek these clarifications. Um, the member, as I understand it, and see if I've noted what she said correctly, 
um, she said that she had shared an anecdote, but in fact, she had not gone down to the police station as she had previously described. Is that correct? Ms. Khan. Uh, thank you, Leader of the House. Yes, it's correct, um, and hence why I'm making this apology today. Yes, I understand. Um, that means, and can I check, because I think the, the member had spoken on the Workers' Party's motion on empowering women it, on the 3rd of August, and the member had made this statement. Three years ago, I accompanied a 25-year-old survivor to make a police report against the rape that was committed against her. She came out crying. The police officer had allegedly made comments about her dressing and the fact that she was drinking. Hence, in the light of what the member has just told us, that statement, at least the part about accompanying the survivor to the police station and what she what the member allegedly saw, that part is untrue. Can the member confirm that? Yes, I confirm that that was not the whole truth. And because later in that day, the Minister of State, Mr. Desmond Tan, had sought some clarifications from the member. And the member in her response said, like I mentioned, it was three years ago, and I do not wish to re-traumatize the person that I had accompanied. Can I ask the member to confirm that that statement, the person that I had accompanied, was also untrue? Yes, that, that was untrue. That was not the truth. Um, I mean, I, firstly, I, wanted, I want to say that um, when I was questioned subsequently, what was going through my mind was that I wanted to protect the survivor and the people that are in the group, that were in the group. Um, and secondly, like I mentioned, it's really difficult to share a traumatic experience like this and to share that I was a part of, a, of, of, of that group in the first place. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that these were the things that were going through my mind while I was answering those questions. Thank you. I understand. I'm, I'm just trying to establish the facts so that we all know exactly what transpired, and then we can think a bit further uh, of what should follow from that. About two months later, I believe, um, the member was asked by the Minister for Home Affairs a further clarification in this house. So that would have been on the 4th of October, 2021. And this was the exchange that took place. Um, I think that the, the Minister for Home Affairs had asked her for details. The member had said she would like them to remain confidential. And the Minister for Home Affairs had said this. Sir, I do not understand this point about confidentiality. Can I ask through you, sir, for Ms. Khan to confirm in this house that everything she told us is accurate, that she did accompany such a person and such an incident did happen? And Ms. Khan's answer was, Yes. Can I ask the member to confirm that that statement, when she said yes, was untrue? It was not the truth, yes. Thank you. I, I have a few more cl clarifications. Please bear with me. If I understood the member correctly earlier, she had said that, I mean, the, the reason and the thinking um, behind what she did 
was that she did not want to disclose publicly that she was a member of the survivors group. Is that correct? Yes, I did, want to, I did not want to disclose publicly that I was a part of a women's support group. Thank I you. Understand. Um, I want to understand from the member why it was necessary actually to say those untruths because the member could easily have related the anecdote by saying that she heard from someone who had this experience. That, that's all that would have been necessary to do. The member would not have had to refer to the support group or even disclose its existence. And there would certainly have been no need to reveal that she was part of the support group. So I would like to ask the member this. Does the member agree that it would have been possible to tell the story without reference to the support group or telling the untruths? Uh, th yeah, thank you for those clarifications. Um, you know, I've been really reflecting on this episode and why um, I told the anecdote the way it, it was. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I did not have the, my own courage to report my own assault. Uh, so I felt, you know, very compelled to ensure that other survivors who do get the courage to, to report their assault, um, to, to have that process done with, with respect and, and with dignity. But I recognize um, the leader of, of the House's um, comments, uh, and, and I do recognize that it was not the right way to go about it. Um, and, and that's why I'm here today admitting that it was a mistake, and, and here making a very frank apology. Thank you. I, I understand that. So, I, I, so I, I, do, I do completely empathize with the reason why the member felt it was necessary to speak up. Um, all, I, all I'm asking is this, and I'm not sure that I had a response, but my question was simply this. It would have been possible to tell the story without the untruths, and without referring to the survivors group. Would the member agree? Yes, so if I was un unclear, I apologize. Yes, I do feel like it, it would have been possible. Um, but in my haste um, and in my passion to, to advocate for, for survivors like myself, um, I, did, I did a mistake. Right. Um, then, uh, well, the other thing I'm a bit puzzled about is I, I can understand the mistake, the spur of the moment, but the only thing is that on the 3rd of August, um, I had specifically stood up in this house to remind members of the need to substantiate allegations made, and I had said this. I just wanted to remind members of the House that when assertions and allegations are made, members must be prepared to substantiate them. This is just a reminder to members so that in future they will understand. So I said that on the 3rd of August, two months later, when the member was asked by the Minister for Home Affairs about this incident, which is two months' time to reflect. Um, why did the member then repeat the untruth? Thank you. Um, like I mentioned before, I think there were two things that were going through my mind. The first was that um, I really wanted to protect the identity of the survivor and those of, of, of the survivors in, in, in the women's support group. Um, and secondly, a lot of people did not know about this assault until very recently, including my family. So I was not ready at that point um, to come forth with this information. Uh, but after being able to have discussions with my family, with my friends, um, and also informing um, the re relevant people, um, it, was, it was clear that I wanted to make this apology. Um, I wanted to make this personal explanation um, like I've done so today. 
Thank you. Um, I have to check another matter. Although the member has retracted and apologised, and indeed that is the correct thing to do, given the circumstances that she has explained, the member has also said that she was relating another survivor's story. This means that there still is an allegation against the police, not the member accompanying somebody and going down, but there is a survivor there with an allegation against the police, which has been related to this house. Um, that means there is still an issue of the need to substantiate the allegations. A withdrawal and an apology does not purge or wipe out a previous failure to substantiate the allegations. What I'm trying to understand, and, and this is very important, when I need to understand what the member knew at the time the allegation was made. Is this a case where, based on what the survivor said, the member, or let me, let me backtrack a bit, because when, when the member was asked about it, she said, with regard to confidentiality, I would not like to reveal any of the information. So is this a case where, based on what the survivor said, the member actually knows the details, but didn't want to disclose them because of confidentiality? Or is this a case where the member actually doesn't know any of the details? Thank you. Um, I don't know any of the details. Um, all I knew was what I shared uh, in my speech on the 3rd of August. Um, and that was an account from the survivor. I understand that it's not going to be able to be verified, um, and hence I've withdrawn my, my anecdote um, and apologized to the Singapore Police Force as well. Thank you. On, on the confidentiality point, if, if I heard the member say, let me just check my notes when the member was speaking. Um, Yes, she said that, um, the member said on confidentiality that she should not have shared the survivor's story without her consent. Can I ask the member why she said that? Is it because the story was shared in confidence, i.e. on the understanding that it would be kept confidential? Yes, one of the principles of being in a women support group is that the details should remain confidential. And that is something that I shared in my speech that, that you know, I, f I feel this failure deeply because I myself am a survivor, so I understand what it feels like uh, to have information out there that, that I, w I did not consent to. Um, and this has been a lesson of consent for me. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, it's a failure I take very deeply. So, um, because the, when the member was asked for details in Parliament, she said that she did not want to disclose because of confidentiality. Um, but, but based on what the member has just said, actually by that time, because the story had already been recounted, it means the member had already breached the survivors, the, the, breached the confidentiality to the survivor. Is that not correct? That is correct, yes. Just one last couple of clarifications. I think the member ended by saying that she promised the residents of Sengkang that she would work even harder for them. About a year ago, the member made this promise also to the residents of Sun Kang. I, I think this was what was reported in an ST report dated the 17th of September, 2020. The member had said, from these interactions, I have also learned that as a leader, I have the power
to start difficult conversations and that it is vital to frame these conversations in a considerate and accountable manner. As an MP, I hope to use the appropriate platforms to speak out on matters concerning my constituents. That was the promise made last year to the residents of Sengkang. I mean, the member has, in the motion on women's empowerment, had the platform to speak here about women's issues. The member had the power to use her position as an MP to advocate. Can I ask the, rem the member that having regard to the fact that the member has not been truthful to Parliament and not able to substantiate the allegations because the member had no details, would the member regard that promise last year to the residents of Sengkang to have been kept? Thank you. Yes, I do, because I'm here today and I'm accountable for my actions. I've apologized to the House. I've retracted um, the anecdote that I made. And I've also apologized to the Singapore Police Force. I recognize that there was a lapse of judgment, but I am here today to apologize for it. And I think that goes back to the spirit of what I initially said a year ago. I understand there is a distinction though. The member is apologizing for not having kept the promise. My question was this, that means that the promise was not kept. Is that not correct? I think one of the important parts of that post was that I would remain accountable. And I think today, here standing in Parliament, I am remaining accountable to my voters and to myself and to the principles that I, I, I wish to uphold. I thank the member for that. It was, that was not quite the way it was framed, but that's all right. The way that it was framed was that it's vital to frame conversations in an accountable manner. But I, I thank the member for her clarifications. Um, these are all the clarifications I have, uh, Mr. Speaker. But I think that in light of what has been disclosed, and, and I thank the member, um, in light of what has been disclosed, it's, it's not possible for me to leave the matter as it is, and I have to raise a point of order. I wish to raise a point of order, Understanding Order 107B. And the point of order is this. The member has, by her own admission, lied to the House three times in her original speech, in the clarifications arising from that speech, and two months later in her response to the Minister for Home Affairs. The member has also confirmed that when she made the statement, she didn't really have any details. That means that she was at the time of making the statement, not able to substantiate her allegation, and in fact, had very little basis for doing so. What this means is that there's this, and, and as a result of that, there's a, a cloud hanging over the police. The police had to go and do investigations and a lot of time and resources were spent on that. It was unfair to the police. I think the member has acknowledged that. I think, but most of all, and this really is the most distressing part, what has happened does a great disservice to the survivors of sexual assault and rape victims. And the reason is this because it's hard enough for such women who are victims to tell their stories, and they have great difficulty in getting people to believe them sometimes. So when relating their stories, and that is based on a lie, an inability or unwillingness to substantiate the story, 
it makes it that much more difficult for these women to come forward and to tell their stories because it's like ink in water. It spreads throughout and it casts doubt and suspicion on the stories and it makes it that much harder for women to be believed. It undermines what we're trying to do and especially in this year of trying to advance women's development. As I've said before, as members of parliament, we are granted privileges. One of those privileges is to be able to speak in parliament with immunity. Unlike other people, we can do so without fear of prosecution because of the underlying public policy interest, which is to be able to raise things. And it's very, very important when we do so that we must be able to speak truth in this house and when we assert or make allegations to be able to back them up. I wish to say to the member that I do hope that given her past experience and what she has described and shared, I hope that she will heal. I hope that she will have time to recover from her issues on a personal level and repair relationships, um, which she has acknowledged have been strained. But the member is also a member of parliament and therefore subject to duties and responsibilities which everyone in this house is also subject to. And one of these, of course, is that when you have parliamentary privilege, you must neither breach that privilege nor abuse it. Um, and I, with great reluctance, because I have sympathy for the member's personal circumstances, but as leader of the House, I also have a responsibility, and that is to ensure that in this chamber, all members of parliament discharge their duties faithfully and accountably and responsibly, and also that if there are any breaches of privilege, that that has to be dealt with. I have to ensure the integrity of our parliament because parliament is a platform that other people look at. Singaporeans look at what we discuss here. They believe what we say. When there's untruths, it undermines the trust. Other people, the international forum and other countries look at what is discussed in this platform and what we say and what we do must be based on truth and integrity because, again, if we do not do that, it undermines the reputation of our parliament, our institutions, and the faith that our people have in us. Therefore, given what we've heard today, I really have no choice but to raise a complaint under Section 107B of the Standing Orders for breach of privilege suddenly arising based on, firstly, the disclosure by the member that she has not been truthful, well, has lied to Parliament, not once, not twice, but three times, and also because she has been unable to substantiate an allegation that has been made. Um, these are matters which prima facie affect the privilege of Parliament, and I therefore reluctantly have to ask the matter, Mr. Speaker, to be referred to the Committee of Privileges. Well, I'm satisfied that the matter complained of prima facie affects the privileges of Parliament. So pursuant to Standing Order 107B, the matter shall stand, referred to the Committee of Privileges.